Do you have to paraphrase Morpheus? A splinter in your mind. If you're interested in hearing the latest information about UFOs, the paranormal, ancient cultures and structures, monatomic elements, longevity, fantastic discoveries in science, download it to your brain, then tune in to us. Hi, I'm Dave. And I'm Maggie. And we are Shiny Side Out, Sundays 2 to 4 a.m. Eastern. See you then. Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. You don't need to expect us. We're already here. Barbara Jean Lindsay is an internationally acclaimed psychic, spiritual healer, author, and founder of the online mystery school, Esoteric University. As the cosmic oracle, she is a conduit to the powers that be to answer your questions about your future self, past lives, current career, love. She shines light into the darkness to illuminate what was, what may be, and beyond. The readings and advice given by Barbara Jean Lindsay are for entertainment purposes only. Should not take the place of any medical, legal, or financial advice given to you by a qualified professional and are not a substitute for medical, legal, or financial advice. If you need a doctor, call a doctor. If you need to be expanded, call the Cosmic Order. Welcome, everyone, to the Cosmic Oracle Show. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay. It's August 21st, Friday, 2020. We're coming to you live from my new place here in Salem, Oregon. So happy to be here. If you hear in the background, oh, that's my new little friend. That's Ollie. And um, yeah, and so he's kind of saying hello to everybody. He's a wonderful little bird that lives here. He's my roommate, OK? Oh. He's excited to be on the show. <laughs> so anyway, so welcome here. Uh, it's going to be a great night tonight. Uh, we have with us uh, Kelly Rainbow Butterfly uh, Lapsaritis, and she's going to be sharing her spiritual wisdom, her ancient knowledge, her love and her light, and she's going to talk to us about transforming yourself and our world into being the best that it can be with the aid of the Sasquatch with their message to humanity. Kelly's an expert, so we're really lucky to have her on. She'll be coming on in just a few moments. Uh, before I do, I do want to tell you thanks for being so generous and giving uh, your donations to keeping us here on the air at Revolution Radio. And you can do that by going to freedomslips.com. That's freedomslips.com and give whatever you can, $5, $10, uh, to keep the lights on, keep the computers running, and everything going here. And uh, we really appreciate it in advance. So far this month, we have uh, received $1,656.72, and we need $2,000 to keep everything running. But somehow, some way, we make it every month. So if you can, uh, go hit that freedomslips.com uh, button uh, on your computer or your phone and give whatever you can. I do want to thank you also for supporting me and my work. Uh, these are my three books, uh, Dying for the Light, Seized by Sekhmet, and The White Light Meditation. They're all available on Amazon.com. And also you can reach me at Barbara Jean Lindsay. That's B-A-R-B-A-R-A-J-E-A-N-L-I-N-D-S-E-Y.com. And you can call for readings. I've been a psychic for over 30 years. And so if you'd like to get a psychic reading, you can call me at 818-688-1398. You can also visit us here on our Facebook page, Barbara Jean Lindsay and the Cosmic Oracle uh, Facebook pages, and also on our YouTube channel, the Cosmic Oracle. So, hey, how's that? I got that all out. So, uh... <laughs> So you're welcome to leave um, comments at the Facebook and ask our guests any questions that you would like. And uh, we're going to give Kelly a call right now. Oops, maybe that's her. So let me call her on another line, though. There we go. So let's give her a call. I, you know what? I think before we call her, I'm going to give, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about her, okay? Uh, let's see. Kelly, let's see. Where is she? Here she is. 
Uh, Kelly, uh, let's see, she started the Rainbow Butterfly Publications, which share spiritual wisdom and ancient knowledge and love and light uh, into the world for the highest good of humanity. It founded in April 2020 by Kelly Rainbow Butterfly Lapsaritis. She's the Rainbow Butterfly Publications associated with the Children of Earth Coalition projects as well as the Sasquatch Family Reunion and Spiritual Retreats and Gatherings. About the author, Kelly is uh, connected to souls of multiple dimensions and levels of consciousness. She is a clairvoyant, a medium, working with several interdimensional beings and is a teacher, energy worker, and event coordinator. So if you have not made it to the past Psychic Sasquatch retreats. You have really missed out. I know that they're not having one this year. Hey, but we're holding it up for next year or maybe even a an online, maybe something like that might be in the works. Who knows? She holds a doctor of metaphysics degree and performs ceremonies as an ordained minister. Kelly's also an author of many books and editor of many books, a publisher for Rainbow Butterfly publications, which she edits, edits and designs and She's published the Sasquatch Message to Humanity book series. We'll be talking about that tonight and is a main contributing author for the Sasquatch Message to Humanity book three. She continues to write and publish with others in several media outlets. And since 2016, Kelly has been organizing and hosting that spiritual and psychic Sasquatch retreat and conference at Chewila Park Learning Center in Chewila, Washington, which has been canceled this year due to COVID-19. She has also been the key coordinator for several other events and gatherings and has spoken at several workshops, seminars, conferences, retreats, and other gatherings such as IN5D in Seattle, Washington, and the Fairy and Human Relations Congress in Twisp, Washington, which we've had Jan Kinsey on, who's really, I'm going next year, okay, Fairy, the Fairy and Human Relations Congress for sure. It's gotta be going next year. We gotta get through this, right? Kelly has also been interviewed over 60 radio and talk shows, and she's been in the documentary Sasquatch Speaks by Hale Mednick, who has graciously invited me to his home. We had an amazing experience there with his Sasquatch clan. In 2019, Kelly founded the Children of Earth Coalition. We'll be talking about that tonight. A communal alliance committed to the regeneration of Earth and all living beings, expanding consciousness and awareness and co-creating dreams with the community and promoting the arts and personal sovereignty. Okay, and if, she, if she's not busy enough, right, with all these multitask things that she's doing, there's one more thing. In addition, Kelly is an autism acceptance advocate and shares the knowledge techniques and natural health information that she has discovered through her own research and also through foresight given to her through her own son on the spectrum and manages a local DIFF abilities group within her community. What an amazing woman, right? Are you excited? I mean, this is a woman who is just, uh, just brings so much to the table. So let's, hey, let's get her on, shall we? I'm gonna give her a call right now. Uh, she's, we, I just talked to her a few minutes ago, so I know she's ready to go. So let's see if we can find her here in my, in my list. We'll go here to Kelly. Kelly, in your favorites. Oh, she's in my favorites. Of course she is. So here we go. We're going to add her right now. So we're giving her a call. Hopefully it all goes through. Well, hello. Hey, that was nice and smooth. It was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you might have to turn up your volume just a tad, though, please. Okay. Okay, there we go. That's better. That's better. So welcome okay, welcome to the Cosmic Oracle Show. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's an honor to be here. I know. I just love talking to you. We're, we're going to 
just talk about all sorts of things today, especially all things Sasquatch, since you are an expert, my dear. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know if anybody can be an expert on another race, but you know, you. It's a, it, yeah, I'm I'm very blessed to to be in communication with them anyway, and to to have some firsthand knowledge. You definitely do. You definitely do. And for people who, let's start off with a, a little bit. What is? I know you probably. I have all kinds of different kinds of listeners to the Cosmic Oracle Show. I have those that are just starting to learn about Sasquatch. And then I have like my family who said, you know, Barbara, it's taken us 30 years to get used to you talking about UFOs and ETs. And so now we're kind of used to that, but then you start talking about Sasquatch and, <laughs> and Bigfoot and that kind of took, took them all over the top again. So uh, let's start off with, what is Sasquatch and Bigfoot and maybe some of their names and, and, and that they're worldwide. Right. Yeah, they are. Well, the, you know, there's uh, so many beings that are lumped into the category of Sasquatch or Bigfoot because they're, you know, hairy humanoids. And so, um, you know, a lot of them are just categorized together, but there's actually many, many different species and races of those kinds of beings. And, um, you know, so the ones, ones that we're familiar with here in the U.S. and things, um, the term Sasquatch actually comes from a Salish word, um, you know, to describe them. But there's different names for them <clears throat> everywhere throughout the U.S. and throughout the whole world. Um, you know, like in Russia, they call them the, the Yeti. In Australia, the Yowie. Uh, China, the Yaren. And so there's there's so many different names and terms, probably hundreds of them and, and ones that we don't even know, because um, especially even many of, um, you know, the native tribes and things like that, so many of them that don't even exist anymore, you know, that we're aware of, they all had different names for them as well. So, <clears throat> but um, in short, they are... Uh, basically our cosmic elder brothers that were here before humanity. Um, they were the, the first mammal people that, that were seated on the earth. And so after a long evolutionary period, uh, you know, here we are as humans, but they still exist, exist because they're a completely different race and, and a completely different species. So, um, you know, there's many different kinds of them. It's It's not... Um, all stereotypical, you know, like um, like at the Yowie in Australia, for instance, or the, actually it's the Yeti, like the snowman that's in Russia. Um, they're known to be, they've been described as being like more aggressive mm -hmm. and things like that. And so that that's just kind of a stereotype, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's from different, behaviors that were observed or different stories that have been passed down, um, you know, but just like humans, there's different cultures of them in all different places of the world. So they have different personalities and different behaviors. And um, I, I like to say beliefs. So it's not really beliefs. It's more of a, a different way of life because of, well, the materials and everything that's at hand too, you know, so, um, how There's, are they coping with the fires? You know, like here in the United States, we have over 600 fires or something like that. Have you gotten yeah. any? I've had a couple people ask me, ask her about the fires. How are they coping with the fire? Well, they don't cope with the fires very well at all. They're, they're forced to leave their habitats, the mm -hmm. ones that live there. Um, you know, and so they, they're, they're not able to survive in those kinds of conditions. Um, a lot of times they will relocate kind of beforehand in anticipation of that. Um, they know to expect that, and so they, they avoid it, um, and they would leave beforehand. Um, you know, but as, as far as there's not a whole lot that they're able to do, um, you know, they, they handle it in the best way that, that they can, help the animals that they can. Um, they do a lot of different energy work and and things like that to help the earth grid and in, in that kind of sense so that it can help to to heal afterwards but but otherwise they're they're just as 
devastated with it as we are. Well, with their love for the forest, right? To see that devastation just right. from a distance, but to live in it, it's got yeah. to just really hurt uh, their hearts, I would think, in such a way. It that, does. That would just... It does, in, indeed. And, and they understand the bigger picture of things, you know, um, you know, not just effect and cause, but, you know, the 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 larger overall picture of things and so you know with forest fires comes regrowth and rebirth as well so mm -hmm. they they focus more i mean certainly they they like i said they feel the devastation and they're sad and they they mourn the loss of of the animals and the trees and you know all of those things but they also have a a higher understanding that this is how it is and ultimately you know, the highest good can come out of any situation. Well, I love that, that they take the higher, the high road, right? They're, they're yeah. the higher vibration road, because they're all about that, right? <laughs> exactly, they are. Uh, so they're walking their talk with that as well. Wow. Yes. Let's, 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 let's go, let's see. I, I thought we would start, I usually start when I have a guest on we talk about extraordinary experiences. So when you started on this road, what are some of like the extraordinary experiences? I mean, when you first, let's see, usually they'll meet you, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, uh, interdimensionally or in thought or in meditation or when you're walking or uh, I'm gonna throw a few things at you or do you have to be in the woods, you know? Uh, Oh yeah, no, not not at all. There's all kinds of, you know, different ways to experience them. So for for my personal journey when it began, um, I was experiencing them in the woods, but not seeing them. I was hearing them and I was feeling them, and there were strange things happening that I couldn't explain. Um, <clears throat> you know, like well, I would hear them. I would hear somebody large walking behind me, and there's nobody there. Oh. Or uh, yeah, oh, um, or just the, the feeling of that, too. You know how you, well, you feel like you're being watched or there's somebody, you know, approaching you or looming mm -hmm. over you. Um, you know, so I could feel that, but there's nobody there. Um, I didn't feel threatened, but I didn't understand it either. Um, and then sometimes it was even more physical than that, like where pine cones or something would be thrown in, in my direction. Oh. Uh, and not and not to hurt me, it was like purposefully missing, oh. but oh. it was uh, not falling from a tree. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they, they, made, they made it really obvious that, okay, it was thrown, it was tossed. Um, you know, so all of these things were just kind of piquing my interest. And so I, I started you know, that's how I was able to kind of process what was happening is by integrating that in little by little and having more of those kinds of experiences. And then, um, and but I, I very much believed in them. I wasn't afraid of them. I was excited at the thought that they might be around. Um, and then I, I did have uh, an incident one time in 2008 in Arkansas um, where it was just undeniable that I knew I was observing a Sasquatch and it was on the other side of a, a river. And so, you know, there was distance oh. between us, but oh. it was a good 15, 20 minutes of watching and listening and observing and, and all of this. And it was wow. just undeniable that it couldn't be anything else. So at that Holy point crap. is when I re really kind of accepted that, uh, okay, Hello? this is uh, real. <laughs> Yes, like th this is real, okay, like not, not a fantasy, this is for real. Right. And, um, you know, so that that was really, uh, I think, the point. incident that really changed my mind or at least yeah. left no doubt for yeah. me. Do you feel like they uh, were acclimating you just so that they didn't want to scare you, right? They wanted, they, they were respectful of your space in a way? Yes. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. It was really just to plant a seed mm -hmm. um, to let me know that they're there and to see if I could tell, you know, if I could sense that. And so, you're, you're um, pretty psychic. you know, in hindsight, <laughs> now that I've connected with them telepathically and, you know, have, have a deeper understanding, they said that they've been there my whole life for especially one in particular who calls himself George. And oh. he said that he was there since I was born. Wow. That he calls himself. 
he calls himself my older brother and huh. my brother and says that he was there since since I was born. Is and, that um, common for you know, people, and, Kelly? Is that common for people to say after they start learning about it and creating relationship with Sasquatch that, oh, my God, they have been here the whole time and I just wasn't aware. Is that pretty common? It is. Um, it, it, it is. And it's also because, you know, these these beings are not only because, you know, some of them are more earthbound. They're more 3D. They're human. They're in this realm. They're living in the forest and they're eating the, the fruits and the berries and the roots. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so they're, they're very much uh, on earth and they have a more, um, a more dense uh, consciousness because they're here on, on this planet. And so, uh, but many other of them, uh, are more evolved, and so you might look at them as closer to having um, the consciousness of like an ascended master, like Camus, for instance. He doesn't label himself that way, uh, you know, as an ascended master, but you could, in comparison, that's where his consciousness is at. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so that's, that's rare for them, too. Like I said, Camus is an example he's kind of a i don't want to say a, a one and only but he is one of the eldest elders mm. uh and which is why he's the one that is trans or not transcribing but um giving these transmissions of the sasquatch message to humanity mm -hmm. um and it's not just him exclusively but he's the one that's kind of well kind of tasked more with that job with communicating with the humans because he has the consciousness to do so mm -hmm. and um you know so other sasquatch though uh, like i said they they have um you know a, a different density in their consciousness and so um a lot of them are just more earthbound they're more subjected to the kinds of you know emotions and things that we experience here in the 3D, uh, whereas other ones are more like guides to us. And so George, who I mentioned, um, is a, a guide to me, but he's also the Sasquatch and, and he and, and others are also ancestors. Mm. Um, you know, so the ones that are not earthbound, they're most often, most likely a part of us, our, our ancestral DNA. So just like... Right. Um, you know, how we might feel connected with the a spirit of a human that has passed, our grandmother or something, um, you know, or we might feel more deeply connected with a, a culture that we don't remember, but our ancestral culture, like me, for, for example, you know, uh, you know, Celtic, I just, I feel a really strong pull to Ireland and all of this, and I haven't been there in this lifetime, but, you know, my ancestors are from there speak to me. And uh, so it's very much the same uh, with the Sasquatch. And when people feel connected to them on that soul level, um, that's very often what it is. They are our, our direct ancestors. Right. Well, we have, there's a lot of junk DNA, right? <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lots of it. <laughs> and Lots so that's the it. stardust. And then we, they could definitely, it's uh, definitely, they could be a part of that for sure. Yeah. Definitely, and it, and it's more of a soul connection than it than it would be through just DNA. Mm -hmm. Of course, that that exists as well, or that's mm -hmm. possible, or that could be at different levels. But mm -hmm. um, the higher, deeper connection is on the soul level. Right, right. Yeah, I know. When it first came into my life, I was just unexpected. I was just, <laughs> I was like, oh my god, that just really happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's the first step in the reality and then you then you kind of breathe you're okay and you take your out breath and all right let's see where this goes so right we, we have a question from david eddington and he asked are the sasquatch are they disappointed that the your retreats postponed they they are but they are not because um you know i i always ask for guidance from the highest that the highest good and the highest guidance that's going to be the best for all and so you know no matter how hard uh we tried we weren't able to to make it 
um, happened this year. And so I had to accept that that's for the best. And, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, what they're guiding me to as well. And that doesn't mean that the Sasquatch won't still be gathering. That right. just means that us us humans, you know, we, we might have some restrictions and we we can still gather in our in our hearts and our souls and right. uh but the Sasquatch, yeah, there, there's no uh, virus that's going to stop them. So. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and then David also asked, when incidents happen between Sasquatches and humans, do other Sasquatch know about it, like a news flash, we, like we have on a TV or a radio? Uh, when something that they need to communicate with each other? Right, let's say like if, or, or with an... Uh, with a um, a um, intervention with uh, with humans, do they go home? Do they go home and talk about it, and then it goes all around the camp or all around the world that they met such and such, and they're in our clan, they're not, or there's different incidences like that. I mean, it, it kind of depends on exactly what you're talking about because some things um, they do want to go to a council of elders to get. Uh, approval of uh, mm -hmm. and different things like that. So they, they do have their guidelines and their rules that they follow and, and most of it um, is really focused around karmic ideas or, or the laws of free will uh, because they can't interfere with those with um, you know the, the laws of free will and nature and so um, they, they will kind of if, so to speak, take a vote on different things. Um, they've told me before that they meet, you know, there's there's definitely an annual kind of meeting and mm -hmm. gathering that they have, um, but it's also just different circumstances. Um, back when there were, I won't say back then, because they still do this, but um, natives have many stories, especially of times that they would gather to trade with each other. And so... Mm -hmm. They still do that. The, the different tribes of the Sasquatch will still do that. They'll meet amongst each other, teach each other different things, uh, meet each other. And that's what happens at our retreats and, and the gatherings that we have as well. Because so many people, uh, the humans that are attending, are so connected with their own Sasquatch guides that they're all coming with them. And so... You know, when we get together as humans, uh, the Sasquatch are also getting together and, you know, just observing us as well, because this is kind of new for them. Most of the ones that would be gathering now are not the ones that may have before. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of them are, are learning new things and how to integrate um, basically our consciousnesses together. Um, mm -hmm. But the group that we have, we're, we're coming together for this higher purpose and we want to interact with them and we want the highest good for the planet. And, you know, we're, um, ecological minded and, and all of this, these things that the Sasquatch really do love and approve of. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's more in the spirit too of, of community, helping one another, being there for one another, sharing joy and love. Uh, and that's very much what they're about as well. Um, and that's a nice relief for them, too, because even though they are higher consciousness beings, uh, this, this planet's been a rough ride for all of us, right. but especially, especially them. They've been here longer than us, and it, it's been an even rougher ride for them. Yeah. And, and to even, I think they must be some of the most patient beings because um, they're still learning still reaching out to trust us. I think that's huge. Yes. <laughs> yeah, in, indeed. And n they're not all. Some of them are mistrusting, mm -hmm. um, you know, but it's funny because they've been, there's been incidences um, like one that I met a couple years ago, and then there was also uh, an instance with Sunbow, who had this too since we've been communicating with them when we met an, a Sasquatch elder that was not so fond of humans, and they let us know. Um, <laughs> oh, let's hear that know? story. Let's hear it. And, and, and let's talk a little bit about Sumbo, because you two have really collaborated since you first met, right? Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, very much so. So 
Well, one one particular um, Sasquatch then that I'll, I'll mention because it's in the book. Uh, I believe it's in book three. Or is it book two? And you know what? I'm sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> I think it's book two. Well, you've written um, how many now? So it's like three, there, four, five. I no, just the three. Sasquatch <laughs> message to humanity: one, two, and three. Yes. And one one and two was written exclusively by Sunbow channeled messages, mostly from Camus. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Camus was all for book one, uh, and then book two, I think there's two others um, besides Camus that, that communicate some messages there. But um, so there's uh, one that he calls uh, the grouchy, or does he call him the, the, gr the grumpy hermit? <laughs> and and um, his name is Limp Bateo. And he became familiar with him up in British Columbia, mm -hmm. uh, which was only about like a maybe two hour drive, three hour drive at most from where I was living. So, you know, real close vicinity too. Um, but uh, so there was this grumpy hermit, white elder Sasquatch that had been watching Sunbow for some time, but not saying anything. He would feel his presence or he would get, you know, a quick, quick glimpse of him and he would know that he was there, but he wasn't communicating. And then one day Sunbow got the communication and uh, Limp Bateuk was just <laughs> pretty rude, <laughs> oh. you know? And, um, you know, uh, I guess you could say kind of putting Sunbow in his place <laughs> as, as, you know, but being a human, um, you know, because he's human and, well, you know, long story short, um, the Sasquatch, the elder here, had trauma from humans before. Mm -hmm. And so he just didn't have, um, you know, a keen liking to them and didn't want anything to do with them. But then he learned through observation that Sunbow was a very different kind of person. And um, so he was, so they, you know, once they met and kind of established this relationship, or it was really just an initial meeting. And then once Sunbow told me about this, I connected with Limpateuk um, psychically, telepathically, mm -hmm. Um, it felt more kind of like he came to me through Sunbow, like he was ready to explore other humans now that he met one, you know. I'm so and, glad um, to hear that. Yeah. I'm so, because that's how I learned mine is through um, Brian Bland. Yes. And, and so I always teased Brian. I said, well, I stole your Sasquatch. He says, no, Barbara Jean, we're sharing the Sasquatch. So I'm. this is the first time I've heard that. You stole a Sumbo Sasquatch. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. And, uh, oh, I love I it. Know. I know. I know. And, you know, it almost kind of felt like that to him because it, it's funny because one thought they kind of took a liking to me. <laughs> yes. And so, I mean, but not initially. At first, he was, he was still pretty, you know, grumpy and grouchy, but, uh -huh. um, could see he was feeling the change and the difference and then within those first two interactions um you know everything kind of ironed itself out and now uh limpate yuk is i won't say he's necessary necessarily a cheery kind of guy um but he takes a, a special interest in liking in humans and he I thinks like that, that it's pretty cool that he's yeah. able to communicate that we can communicate with each other um, and he's enjoying getting to know what humans are about and sharing, you know, the m minimal things that he wants to share about himself. He still feels very private and not as open as, you know, some other ones might be. Right. Um, but see, that just goes to show you the healing that can take place. Right. So, um, you know, yeah. the, so Limpate was, was hurt and you know, feeling damaged from, you know, past incidences with humans and didn't want anything to do with them. And, and now, you know, here we are communicating and, and actually even including him in the book when he wanted nothing to do with us. And so it, it's a big healing. I love it. And where can we find your books? And can you, it's the message to humanity, book one, two, and three. And where's the best place for our listeners to find those? 
they're all on Amazon, but I, I built a new website just a few months ago, which is uh, sasquatchmessage.com. And that is not www, just, just sasquatchmessage.com. Um, and so that gives you a little bit of the, the backstory on how we were, um, you know, how this all began. Uh, and all three of the books are also in PDF form there. Uh, oh, but you can also uh, link it to Amazon to purchase in um, paperback or Kindle if you'd like as well. Fantastic. I just posted that so you can go back and take a look. It's right there. It's, it's a beautiful website gorgeous considering you just put it up it's impressive <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> alex urbina asks i hear that they like to hear us sing in the woods or play our instruments can you confirm that yes they do that's i mean they absolutely love music and sound and vibration and and anything that you know, like that, because, I mean, really, that's kind of basically all that everything is anyway. Every kind of energy can be boiled down to that. So, um, you know, but music is one of the wonderful, beautiful things that we're able to create that they can't. Um, and, I mean, they can, you know, they can bang sticks and, you know, do drumming and things like that. But I can pretty much guarantee you their, their fingers don't work so well on a guitar. <laughs> so, um, you know, but they, they really, they do. They really love to hear us celebrating and creating, making music, having fun, um, being in joy. They, they love it. And, um, when we create music, no matter what it is, um, or actually any kind of creative outlet, you know, yeah, it's yeah. not just music, but they Aging love words. to see dancing or, um, you know, anything like that, or even the writing. They really encourage people to um, just go with their creative flow. And, you know, that that's really who we are that's when we feel the most alive is when we're creating or when we're dancing when we're singing when we're celebrating with other people that's when we feel the most alive and uh they want us to they want to remind us that hey, you know it's really cool to be alive right to celebrate <laughs> this, our this life world here, doesn't right? always feel like it you know <laughs> so. yeah i walked in the woods today believe it or not i found some woods i just moved here and and um, said hello to them. And I got to tell you this, and I bet our listeners have this experience as well. They'll have to let us know. But just because I, you know, I get really busy doing all these other things, and then I think because I was having you on the show, and this happens when I know I'm going to talk to Brian Bland or Michael Harrell. Those are my two <laughs> contacts for some reason. But I knew you were coming on, and so yesterday I had a whole download with with uh, Sasquatch. They were you know, just telling me everything is going to be okay. And they were just very loving. And I could just feel this love part come around and kind of envelope me. And it wasn't anything that I could see, but what I could feel. And my, my roommate, Dawn Nicholson, had the same thing. And she didn't say anything until she got home. She goes, how was it today? You know, didn't say anything. I go, well, the Sasquatch were busy. She goes, oh, my gosh, they were. So... <laughs> <laughs> so we were That's both great. talking about that. So I think by us just talking about it, it opens up so many doors and and um, creates a bridge, right, for us. We're really going to need them. We're going to need their uh, their wisdom that they've been able to stay all these. How, do you have any idea how many years I've got different, 450,000 years or how many years or have they been on the planet? Do you have any idea, or does anybody know? Yes, they said that they've been here. Camus, Camus said that their people were seated here about 200 million years ago. Wow. wow. 200 million years ago. And we were seated here about 50 million years ago. Wow. So they've been here three times as long as we have. Yeah. So we, so yeah, we, yeah, it's time, isn't it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so um, we yeah. have a question that says from Rose, she says, my first big real wake up Sasquatch experience was in Minnesota in 2010. 
I attended the 2019 gathering in Chihuahua after being strongly drawn to do so and am absolutely sure that the Sasquatch tribes were actively networking the humans, ambassador to ambassador. And you kind of, that's kind of what's going on on the show today. I, maybe because they're not able to reach us at the retreat, I really felt them more active um, today. <laughs> maybe it's just yeah. because it's going through my show, but, but I really have been feeling them a lot more. And so we'll have to ask our uh, listeners if they've been feeling it as, as more than normal or not. Yeah, so well, I, I've had some people telling me that uh, just over the last few days, too. So oh. um, I, I believe it. I didn't know if it was just me or, <laughs> but now, now I'm convinced that, yeah, they are being more active right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and uh, you know, and there was a lull for a while at see where, so a yeah. lot of people say, I mean, everybody's, oh, um, yeah. you know, experience is different, but, uh, there's times where it seems that most people in communication with them are kind of like, Hey, have you talked to your guy for a while? I haven't heard from him. And, you know, they, they do things collectively too, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, just ebb and flow with everything. So, you know, there's times where they're, they're more active and then times, uh, where they may not be, at least with us, they yeah, may be more active yeah. and trying to help the planet at that point. Yeah. I, I feel that too. That's for me, just on my personal is that they, they're there and then they're not there no matter what I do. <laughs> And then they go, okay, right. <laughs> you learn what you needed to learn. And so maybe you get to have a conversation with them again, you know? So it's interesting. Right. So, so we have a question from David Eddington again. Thank you, David, for asking these really wonderful questions. And his question is, hi, David. <laughs> hi, David. Do uh, Sasquatches use crystals? That's an interesting question. They, you know, I don't know how much they use crystals, but um, as far as what, how, what, the way that we might use them, but they do indeed certainly use crystals. <laughs> they use the energy from crystals. Um, they gift crystals to different people, oh. and they are known to live in crystal caves and crystal oh. areas and, and things like that. Um, you know, so there's so many wonderful properties to them that they use their, uh, they conduct energy and light and sound, every, everything. Um, so yes, they do use them, they, but they don't necessarily like collect them the way that I do, <laughs> uh -huh. you know? Mm -hmm. Um, can, can you give us a crystal story? Can you give us that crystal story? Sure. Well, let me think. Well. Uh, the one that's coming to mind for me immediately, I guess, is uh, I had so, a collection of different crystals, and they really in, um, instructed me and guided me in a, a very sacred, sacred way to build a medicine wheel. And they showed me where to place all of these different crystals um, on the grid of the medicine wheel for a higher purpose. Um, you know, the position to put them in, uh, the size to, to put them in, everything like that. And so I, I can't even tell you exactly the reason why, but I know that they know. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're able to read the energy signature of a crystal far better than I can. And so they're able to tell, I guess, where that energy is best applied at. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people gift crystals in the forest and things like that. Um, and sometimes they don't take them. And mm -hmm. I've heard people, you know, pretty disappointed. Oh, I left these crystals for the Sasquatch and they didn't take them. But, you know, that that's okay. They totally know that you left them there for, you know, left them there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're able to tune into your consciousness and receive that gift either mm -hmm. way. But uh, to them, they probably thought that that was the perfect placement for those crystals or mm -hmm. that, you know, that's enlivening that particular spot or, mm -hmm. um, you know, something like that. Because a lot of times people are guided to do things that they don't even quite know what they're doing. Um yeah, there's been other times I, I always like to carry some crystals with me, even, you know, little 
shards of them or something, mm -hmm. but I'm always gifting them in different areas. Um, and there's been a few times where they've instructed me to put a, a crystal or a particular crystal in the water, in flowing waters, so oh, that, nice. um, you know, that cleansing energy. And I, I do a short ceremony with it, too, um, you know, before putting it in. Oh, do you say um, some and that words? Do you say and that, some what's that? Do you say some wonderful words? Can you give us, like, an idea for people that would maybe want to do that? <laughs> Um, yes, well, really, I allow whatever comes to me in, intuitively, and, you know, every now and then, sometimes it's uh, accompanied with light language and things like mm. that, but it's just, um, it's blessing and, and cleansing the crystal and setting the intention, um, you know, that the energy within it is going to cleanse and clear that area and all the negativity or any kind of, um, uh, attachments or any kind of um you know ill perceptions that are connected with a different area so it it kind of it kind of depends you know if it's crystal clearing or i'm sorry if it's cl cleansing the waters then you would talk more about um the the water and mm -hmm. the cleansing process of the water or uh, bring in the four directions i always honor the four directions um, north, south, east, and west in, in everything that I do. And that's just kind of my way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it doesn't mean you necessarily have to, but um, I find it helps <laughs> anyway mm -hmm. for me. And, um, you know, so that's, uh, there's, there's not any kind of really particular prayer. I just pull up from whatever's in my heart at that moment. Um, and a lot of times when I feel to do something like that it's because i'm feeling the energy or the emotion of that area um like there's a place here that was an old military base or oh what was it a, um i think i'm not sure what it was they they call it the radar dome here mm -hmm. um and it's in colville and anyway it used to be like some kind of military base and uh, anyway, there's all these old structures and buildings, and it's just covered, like, everything has all this graffiti on it, and it's, like, not very kind-looking graffiti. It's just, you know, the energy of the place is not mm -hmm. good. Um, and because I could feel this, ugh, this, mm -hmm. you know, just, it was so nasty <laughs> feeling, mm -hmm. you know, those prayers came out different and, like, desperate, you know? Right. Uh, whereas other times when you're, when you're, um, you know, honoring and blessing a water or a stream or something, that kind of, that prayer would come out a little bit different, a little bit more flowery, so to speak, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, if, um, if, and if, that's how, that's mm -hmm. how I do it. I mean, I know that there's people that have, you know, uh, a really particular prayer or right. really particular strong affirmation and I'm not against that at all, but I, I just do things my own way, I guess, or well, the way and, that I feel guided to do yeah. it. Yeah, and you have an opportunity to do that. And so just by yeah. by doing that, setting an example, it gives all of our listeners, you know, that opportunity. Maybe they had not thought about that before, that they could take a moment and do a blessing or a prayer and and, and then give a gift, too. And so... Um, we just have a few minutes more until the break, believe it or not. So um, what would you suggest as a gift of some kind of gift that you think or that you know that the Sasquatch like to receive from us humanity? You know, it's really whatever is from the heart. It's not It's not about the material object itself. Um, if you're connected with a being that you know really likes something in particular, then, you know, of course that would be a lovely gift for them. If, if you know your Sasquatch absolutely loves the smell of sweet grass, then, mm. you know, that's a, that's a lovely gift to give her. Um, you know, but otherwise, they, they do really like natural things um, because they don't have use for anything that's not really... Um, but it's really more of the intent that's behind it. It's it's the act and the practice of the giving more than it is the, the object of, of whatever it is that you're giving, giving or offering. Um, sometimes if I go out and I forget to bring something with me or, I mean, I might even just go to the grocery store and feel a, a strong pull or something. And if I don't have anything with me, I'll just pull a hair out of my head and... <laughs> 
and give that, I give oh, my I hair, love or, some, that. or I sometimes love that. like if I take something, like if I find something in the forest, oh look, there's a lovely feather or something, or <laughs> here's a you know a crystal or something that that was left for me, um, you know that I I feel I take, I always give something back, and if I don't have anything to give back, I'll I'll give a hair, um, <laughs> or I will also spit on the area that that. I took something from, and that's an mm. honoring, you know, not a, <laughs> you know, not, I know spitting <laughs> kind of sounds like rude, but it's real, it's sharing a part of me huh. with that plant and huh. it's giving it water. It's usually plants that I would uh -huh. spit on oh, uh, because, you know, I'm giving it that's water awesome. and offering it a piece of myself and I do it with honor, you know, mm -hmm. and love and I say thank you and so that's mm -hmm. not taken as an offense like it would be if you spit in somebody's face, you right, know. Right, right. And I know when <laughs> I walk I have a water bottle and I always tend to just pour a little water for whatever plant that's there that gets my notice or it calls me out and I, I just, I don't know if I'm doing it more for me or for them, I, it just makes me feel good to give something to the beauty. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. That's beautiful. <laughs> so we're gonna we're almost to break, and so um, when we get back, I have a couple of questions. So stay tuned, everybody. Uh, we'll be back at six oh four, and so in the meantime, a couple of questions we're gonna be asking Kelly about in part two is from Katara Udaro: Is is there any truth to Sasquatches being able to teleport? So we're going to kick it up a little bit. We're going to talk about teleportation. And then Vicki Christensen asked, so what are your thoughts on are they multidimensional? So, I mean, we're going to just kick it right out um, when we get back after the break. So I want to thank everyone for uh, coming on the show and listening in today. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, um, this will be later on at uh, Freedom Slips on Revolution Radio in their archives, and uh, also be on the Cosmic Oracle Show um, YouTube channel later. So, wow, so all things Sasquatch with you, our wonderful uh, Kelly. Um, it's just so great to have you on the show. And again, let's let people know where you're going to, where they can reach you, the best way to reach you, because you do readings and healings as well, right? Yes. Let's talk about that. Yes, we I have do. four minutes. Let's do it. <laughs> sure. Yeah, well, the um, the best way to reach me is uh, my email, most likely. Or if you're here on Facebook, then you're probably seeing my name somewhere. So that's a great way to, to contact me, too. Um, but my email is uh, kellyrainbowbutterfly at outlook.com. And then... Um, I have the the, the uh, sasquatchmessage.com website um, that has a lot of information about the, the Sasquatch Message to Humanity books. Um, and it links also to another website that I have, uh, psychicsasquatchretreat.com, that's for the gatherings. Uh, and like I said, the, this one this year has been canceled, um, but any other gatherings that we're going to have are going to be announced there. So, so far, it's just been an annual gathering but i think we're going to kick it up a notch and start having those a lot more often i love it i love it and so i have the sasquatch ever gifted you anything physically oh yes oh, i mean many things let's hear um, about that wow like well oh one i have a wonderful collection of feathers Oh. For one thing, absolutely wonderful collection of feathers. I think that's one of my most favorite things to receive. And so mm. that's like one of their most favorite things to, to gift. Oh. Um, and, um, and I've received some amazing, amazing feathers that people don't find. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I know that they're, they're gifts. Um, also, this, okay, this is a great story. In 2005, uh, this is before I was even connected with the Sasquatch, um, but in hindsight now I know and I recognize that it, that it was mm -hmm. them. And so this, you know, goes back even further. Like I said, they've been watching and observing for a while, but back in 2005, I was going through um, a hard 
space in my Mm -hmm. life. It was a difficult transition in my life. Um, I was living by myself in Arkansas, and um, one evening there was a knock at my door, and it just scared me. First of all, I was in this place that nobody really knew where I lived. There was, there's nobody that would have been knocking on my door, like for any reason, especially Mm -hmm. at the time of night that it was. Um, and it really freaked me out. I was really terrified. Um, and it's because I knew that whatever was behind that door was not human. Mm -hmm. And, and I didn't know I could not process what I was feeling or thinking. I was like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't I think that that's a human knocking at my door? Who else would knock at a door, you know? So I'm kind of arguing with myself and I, and I did not answer the door. I was too freaked out. Um, you know, but still, like I said, in the back of my mind, I, I knew that whatever was knocking wasn't human. And that's why I decided there's absolutely no way I can open that door. (laughs) And so the next, so the next day is when I finally opened the door and, um, I had a little hedge of bushes in, in front of it. And I look out there and there is a bouquet of wildflowers. I mean, there must have been at least 15, 20 different types of flowers. And it was arranged so beautifully. It had like these giant yarrow leaves in the back. It was these beautiful wildflowers. And I've never seen these wildflowers. I like even looked around and I was like, I've I've never even seen a lot of these or I don't see where these would be growing or anything. Mm -hmm. And it was tied together with one of those little... um, plastic kind of vinyl the you know the 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 neon strips that they tie around trees right to 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 mark them to cut them or to not cut them down it was it was tied it was tied together with one of those a pink one and a bow and i was just like (laughs) (laughs) oops oh well beautiful story thank you for sharing thank you we'll be right back stay tuned for part two everyone We'll be back at 6.04. So don't go anywhere. Stay tuned for part two. Thank you. This is Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. We'll be right back after this message. Those guys freeze. That's just a freedom cortex. Looking for an answer it doesn't have. See? Even your brain knows you're saying no. The guy is filling with adrenaline right now. Whether you know it or not. The heart's beating fast. It's getting a little hard to breathe. The neurobiological system keeps telling it to run. But your knees is too weak to move. Fear is not real. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. It is a product of our imagination, causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. That is mere insanity. But do not misunderstand me. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. We are all telling ourselves a story. Listening to Revolution Radio Yeah. <laughs> 
Join Revolution Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Studio B for Momentary Zen with host Zen Garcia at FreedomSet.com, the People Station. secret that the so-called mainstream media is best described as controlled propaganda. Countless news stories are either totally ignored or spun with half-truths, and because of this, essential facts and vital information are often compromised. Join Dr. Ott every Friday night on Studio B at 10 p.m. Eastern and learn why the story behind the story was nominated for a Peabody Award in its second year of producing unparalleled broadcasting excellence in 1997. That is, if you really care about learning the truth. Thanks for listening while we took that short break here at Revolution Radio and FreedomSlips.com. And now we're going to get back to your host. Welcome back, everyone, to the Cosmic Oracle Show. This is your host, Barbara Jean Lindsay. And we're right here, part two, with our wonderful guest, our Sasquatch expert, Kelly, La- Kelly uh, Rainbow Butterfly. Oh, my goodness. I just, I think I blew that. Kelly, I'm... It just came out automatically. Sorry about that. <laughs> Welcome to the it's show. So, thank you. Uh, we're having yeah, some fun, it's right? Still, it's still lapsaritis too, and and I'm just you know re whatever. We got I got several names now. So. I, I love <laughs> rainbow butterfly. It fits rainbow you. butterfly. I love it. It just fits you beautifully. And we have a, a, a comment from Vicki J. Christensen says, Kelly does amazing readings and her energy shines through. So make sure you contact Kelly and, and uh, get a reading. And, and it could be a Sasquatch emphasis, right? If they uh, would like oh, to. Mm-hmm. Certainly, yes. Yeah, there's, um, I've had, uh, I've spoken with quite a few people that, you know, I've, I've helped to, to connect them with their Sasquatch guides or, um, you know, or at least the Sasquatch have come through to me to give them, you know, some kind of guidance in moving forward. So, um, and, and so far I've only gotten positive feedback in the, you know, it's, it's, uh, been a wonderful experience. So <laughs> thank you, Vicki. Uh-huh. And, and we also, I want to remind our listeners here tonight too, that thank you, David, for reminding me. He asked, Barbara, how is your channel supported? And it's on Revolution Radio, and we're an all-volunteer station. So no one gets paid for anything. And so um, so it's only by donation. So if you can give a donation out to Revolution Radio, that would be great. If you want to support my work, um, buy my books on Amazon.com. And I do readings and support Kelly and her work. And at her, I mean, we got it together. We got it all going on, don't we? We're dedicated we're really dedicated to to our work aren't we kelly <laughs> we are we are and we, we are best and we love what we do too right i do yeah yeah so let's go with the question number one um where okay katara udaro asks is there any truth to sasquatches being able to teleport Yes. Yeah, they they certainly can, although that's not really the term uh, Mm -hmm. that they use or that I'm familiar with so much and and the the way that they're able to to travel and move. Um, Because teleportation is kind of, uh, you know, from one place to another. And so they they can do that, but they go about different methods and uh, they, they do travel through portals. Um, but that's not exclusive. They don't always travel through portals. Uh, what they do more than anything, which is also safer for them, 
I don't understand the safety exactly, but they've said that it's safer for them mm -hmm. to you to uh, do by location or some of them can even do multi location, but it's where they're changing their frequency to where they can literally be in two places at once mm -hmm. or multiple places at once. Uh, they're, so their consciousness is, is uh, fully aware and fully there in different locations at one time. And um, so when you think of them teleporting, um, that's like going from one place to a next. And most of the time, they're still existing somewhere else, uh, even, you know, when you're experiencing them, mm -hmm. um, you know, but like I said, they can also travel through through portals and vortexes and things. Um, and then oftentimes they use cloaking. Um, and so they didn't actually go anywhere, even though people think that they did. <laughs> uh, and so that's when they're changing their, their vibration once again, so that they're, they can be undetected. They're still very much there. And when I say cloaking, um, that means, well, they're still there and they're just invisible to the human eye. Mm -hmm. Uh, some people can still see them. Uh, you know, if you're aligned with that particular vibration, then you may still be able to sense them or part of them or, or something like that. Um, but if you were to, you know, for instance, if they were physically standing in front of you and then all of a sudden they weren't, most likely they're still standing in front of you. And if you reach out, you can feel them, you know, so they're still there. It's just that they can change it so that they're completely undetected. So there, there's many different ways. Um, you know, so not only the, the portals, but they also travel on, on spaceships right, and things right. like that. So, several of them do, not all of them, but several of them do. Oh, let's, ones that let's are hear a story. Especially connected with the different star races. Oh, let's hear a, let's hear a UFO Sasquatch story, Kelly, that you've heard. <laughs> Okay. This is a story. This is Sasquatch story time with with Kelly and <laughs> and Barbara. There you go. <laughs> it is. I've got several stories. Let me let me pick which one. I've I've told the uh, the first story so many times. I think so many people have heard that. Um, I I'll just briefly tell you in in, in 2012, um, which is the time that really. It, it's what woke all of this up for me, especially. Like I said, it, it took time processing different things for a while. Um, but on December 13th, 2012, I was visited in my bedroom by um, a, a star person and a Sasquatch at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, there was a, a, a ship outside, uh, which I could... I couldn't get out of bed, actually. I, I felt stuck and frozen in the bed. But I knew that there was a ship out there, and there was, like, physical evidence of it. Uh, because I could see the light shining very brightly outside, and also because it made my windows rattle. And it even knocked something off of uh, the top of my little TV in the room. And so that, for me, was, like really physical evidence right there that something occurred if something got knocked over, you know. <clears throat> Just one second, I need to take a drink. Oh, sure. Thank you. I felt my throat getting dry. Um, so, uh, but that that evening, uh, being visited by the star person and, and the Sasquatch, um, I wasn't sure what was happening, but it completely changed my life. And um, the star person was telepathing to me that, you know, this is, um, we're meeting you here and, and love, and this is for your highest good, and you don't need to be afraid. And this is, you know, these kinds of things, even though I was, I wasn't really fearful, but I was definitely wondering what the heck was going on. <laughs> but I also felt um, a, a real reassurance that, well, this was all really good. Like, this is what I've been waiting for. Like, this is what I've been asking for. And uh, come to find out a year later, actually, because I made it a point that that was such a magical experience for me, life-changing, um, that a year later, of course, I, I noted the date and I meditated during that time, you know, on the anniversary of it. 
and uh, and I learned during that meditation a year later that um, what they had done, which I thought they were extracting eggs, mm -hmm. um, you know, from my ovaries uh, to you know for DNA, which I believe well that was in part too. But I, mm -hmm. I learned a year later that they had actually healed me of cervical cancer. Mm -hmm. that I didn't know that I had. I had no idea. And, um, you know, so that was even so much more warming to me to know, you know, I, th I thought it was really just the incident that really kick-started it all and started the, the communication and the deeper relationship with them and uh, di didn't, didn't realize how much they had really helped me at that time until a year later. So... Um, you know, so that was the, the first incident that would combine those two subjects together. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but I didn't go on the spaceship at that time. Um, but I have visited on uh, spaceships. It usually happens in my dream time, mm -hmm. although there's been a few times where it does not, where I'm, I'm able to consciously, in my awake consciousness, uh, visit something like that and uh, two times actually the Sasquatch guided Sunbow and I to do it at the same time oh. and that was re that was really uh, incredible uh, one time we were actually I don't know how far he was in British Columbia and I was here in Washington so we were a couple hundred miles away from each other or something and we were uh typing chatting on facebook with each other and and the elders were instructing us while we're chatting um to do these different practices to do these different things they wanted to teach us different multi-dimensional lessons um i should back up and say too that the the sasquatch message to humanity books really talk a lot about the multi-dimensional aspects of things and um the way that at least for me, the chapters that I wrote, the way that I was best able to write it and understand what I was writing was to have the experience first. And so a couple mm. different times they instructed us to have this kind of experience together. And like I said, one time we were a couple hundred miles apart, uh, but they took us both consciously on the same ship and were reporting back to each other what we're seeing and experiencing, and it's the same thing. Uh, another time, they did it when we were sitting right beside each other, um, sitting right beside each other, uh, fully awake, and they totally <laughs> took ah. us on the spaceship, and we could both see, we both reported back different things, but we both know that we were on at the same place because we were brought on together we were introduced to somebody and then I was taken to like one chamber and he was taken to another mm -hmm. and then we met back up so we were able to share what both of us experienced when we weren't with each other and then share the same story that we experienced when we were with each other on the ship wow. so um that was that was really incredible those were some um, really amazing things and it's hard to even explain to <laughs> you know um because it's well it's so multi-dimensional it wasn't our body bodies physically on a ship but our consciousness was fully there you I know love so, that. I love yeah that. and so do, do you have any idea what they what they were trying to communicate to you or they were it's just subconsciously first before they um, communicate to you. Are they setting you up for the future? I, you know, what do they, what are they doing on those ships, Kelly? Oh, there's lot, there's lots of different things. There's different jobs and different things. Um, the the last one that I'm talking about, actually, Sunbow was um, in communication with Mother Earth um what you know where he went they actually took me to meet some of my hybrid children <laughs> and um yeah and to go into kind of a, a healing uh chamber of what i needed at the time uh so i can i can recall that but uh, there's also lessons, you know, I, I feel like uh, the bigger thing, right. the bigger thing on the left on the ships are lessons. Um, I've seen like a big screen, um, 
you know, where mm-hmm. you're learning, but it's uh, it's hard to describe because it's it's almost like codes. It's almost like coded information that's that's coming in and integrating more than you are just like sitting there watching a teacher on the screen or right. something. So they give you it, an experience. Yes. They yeah. It's it's almost like entering a hologram yes. and absorbing everything in that hologram. Yes. There's no separation there as well. It's totally connection, right? Right. Right. Oh. Yes. That's amazing. That's amazing. Do, have they? Uh, I'm just thinking. I do you ever ask, do? Do you ask them questions? Do you telepathically communicate, or is it them just teaching in? and you're just receiving? It's a little bit of both. It it kind of depends on the being too. Some of them just have a very direct message to give Mm -hmm. and it's not so much a discussion. You know, it's um, even sometimes it's, hey, sit down, grab pen and paper and take down this message. Mm -hmm. Um, I would say closer to the beginning of my my real communication with them, it was a lot more back and forth. Um, And a lot of that was with two particular beings that are more open to that. They're um, Sunni and George, who I feel very close to. They feel very much like family where you would feel open, discussing, going back and forth, asking questions, just like how you would you would feel comfortable asking some people questions and you wouldn't others, you know, right, right. Uh, or sometimes it's just really matter of fact. And other times, yeah, it's more of a discussion where you can toss around ideas. Um, a lot of times when it, when it's a message that's, for instance, a message to humanity, you know, something that Camus would give. Um, that's more of just a direct message than it is a conversation. But a lot of times when it comes to matters, personal matters, matters of the heart, matters of karma, things that you're questioning in your life, um, it will be more back and forth. Mm -hmm. They'll answer your questions, but they're always very vague about it too. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, um, you know, it's never really a straight answer. A, A lot of times it's more... Um, if you so choose, kind of, or if right. you create it, or so they if show you, you the door, they show you the doors, right? Just... Or that's this. This is a probability reality kind mm-hmm. of thing because, well, that that's really the whole purpose is the whole multi-dimensional aspect. All of the, all of what we can create and all of what we can do, everything that we can imagine already exists. Which one are are you going to adopt? Right. You know, right. Yeah. Which one are you going to go for? <laughs> right. Uh, and and uh, I do want to go back to have you ever seen your hybrid children? Were you ever, I know a lot of women, they are able to see them or. Mm-hmm. or and I just wondered if you had. I have. I have. And some I have. Oh, I think I'm echo. Some I haven't seen so clearly. Um the one that I remember most clearly, uh, most definitively, looks human, mm. um, except his head is a little bit bigger than a, a human's. Um, I mean, it's it's pretty human-shaped, but it looks larger than mm-hmm. a typical human's. And he has really light hair and really bright blue eyes. Um, and you can tell that he's not human, but he's, you know, c- closest to human looking quote unquote alien <laughs> that there would be. And his name is Charles. I didn't name him. I was told that was his name. Maybe I did name him. I don't know. Um, you know, but, um, he's the one that I can recall the most, like his face. I could draw him right now. I know what he looks like. I know how he felt. Um, other ones, though, were just kind of a, a knowing that they exist. I, I never really saw the other ones as intimately as I saw Charles, even if I might see their outline or kind of see a basically like a number or something. But um, n- none of them that I know quite so clearly. But I do know that quite a few 
that there's I've gone through different phases of the whole hybridization program where initially um, they were using my DNA with some hybrid races. I don't I don't know the name of all of them or if mm -hmm. they even have a name, um, but that there's been different cycles where I'm carrying or, or assisting in the birthing process um, of different races. And um, so the other ones initially were more humanoid. And then at one time they said, okay, it's time to make a change and you're gonna, going to start uh, carrying some Sasquatch hybrid races. And, and I have, I've done a few of those and they even warned me like, you're going to feel this a little more like this is a heavier baby. This is a, a bigger being and you're going to feel this a little differently and in preparation, you know, um, probably so I didn't freak out and think I was like really pregnant, <laughs> you know? Um, but that's the thing is that I, you do sometimes carry an actual being in your body and other times it's more energetic. Uh, the Sasquatch races I actually carried in my oh. body. They were actually there, and then, but they still energetically extract them. So I, I don't understand the whole process right, of it, and right. I, I think I would rather not. Honestly, <laughs> I'm, I'm here to volunteer and help, um, and I don't understand how it all works. But I know some of them um, are have more. 3D human DNA than than others. Mm. Uh, I know Charles lives on the ship. Mm -hmm. I know that for sure. Um, and I'm not I'm not sure about the other races. I don't know if they're you know seated on other planets if they come here to Earth. I, I'm not sure about that. Um, and I I believe that a lot of my uncertainty the the non clarity that I have on that is is for my highest good. Uh -huh. Uh huh. So I don't. So I don't question it too much. Right. Right. But because I mean, if you think about it, as a mother, you, I mean, it's hard for a mother to be separated from her children, and so for me not to have this stronger feeling bond with them, that's probably for my my highest benefit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting. And so, why do you think they're doing like a hybrid race then? Yeah, did they give you any idea of that or or uh, why their uh, interaction with humanity is it to help save our planet yes it, it's to help humanity I mean we're we are hybrids and just about every mm -hmm. well I mean every race that we know is a hybrid and mm -hmm. this has been an ongoing program this isn't anything new um, they just they keep experimenting until they kind of get things right <laughs> and um, well we have know, they have a ways and, to go <laughs> right right well and you know what but we're we're all perfect in our imperfections too yes. so even the way that we are now as humans you know we look at ourselves as being imperfect and yeah i guess we are but we you know we're perfectly imperfect but even the way that we were designed to be vulnerable and to to need uh nature you know right. and things like that right. and, and um, we do you have, know that's why uh, we're these these small little hairy or non non hairy <laughs> you know Big hearts. We, we have we, big so hearts. We can too. remember. We can remember how dependent that we are, mm -hmm. and um, you know. So anyway, there's all kinds of different beings that uh, have been created for different purposes. Um, the Sasquatch, or some beings, I should say. I won't. I won't necessarily say the Sasquatch, but beings that are large, hairy humanoids. Some of those races were created to be more like for slave labor, um, you know, and oh. that's why they were built so big and strong and tough, this thick skin and this hair and, you know, all, all of these different things um, oh. so that they hmm. could be great workers. Do you know if they're um, connected you know, with Anunnaki at all or any of that sort of thing? I, I, I just what thought was of that. Do what was any, the question? Do they have any kind of a connection with Anunnaki, with like the whole Anunnaki idea? <laughs> 
slightly different mm -hmm. different races do mm -hmm. um it's just such a vast complex subject because there's, there's so many branches so many different races of everything that even the idea of anunnaki is not pure mm -hmm. just like the idea of sasquatch isn't pure because it's not just one type of being mm -hmm. um but um in the third book um some of the sasquatch that i connected with they explained to me that they're basically a hybrid between between a hybrid anunnaki race huh. and like a hybrid sasquatch race um, there's a, a race of beings called the Anu Tinzine, which is kind of a cousin or a, a hybrid offshoot of, of the Anunnaki. Um, and the Anu Tinzine uh, have the, uh, the DNA of some of the hairy humanoid, you know, the Sasquatch type beings. And they're the ones, uh, not exclusively, but they were created more for slave labor too. And so these beings, uh, the Anu Tinzine, they're large, hairy, but they also have these long heads. So they look, they have the long, long heads like oh. the Anunnaki do. Oh, and they nice. don't have nearly as much hair, but they are, you know, still hairy. Oh. So, you know, there's all these different races that we've never really been aware of. Um, you know, they may have different bones and samples of some of these different races and it's pretty well known that the the smithsonian has these large collections of all of these different races that, that they can't explain so they're just kind of you know tucked away until one day when they're able to put enough pieces together to try to explain it or, or <laughs> you know we, or um, we put the pieces together and explain it right, like you're right. doing right here today <laughs> right <laughs> exactly well, we have a question from Susan O'Connor, and she asked, um, are the Sasquatch, do you think the Sasquatch are angels? They can be for some people. Mm -hmm. um, they're not, not necessarily angels uh, in the sense that, you know, we might think of as angels. Um, the beings that we actually think of as angels because of the wings and the angelic kind of features, a lot of them actually ha have a very predominant uh, avian DNA uh, because here on Earth, before there were the mammal people, there were the bird people. And so a lot of the angels, um, they were able to expand their consciousness uh, to a, a place or the bird people, the avian people. Uh, basically they evolved and so many of them did evolve into what you would think of as an angel a guardian angel that's what that per those particular races were tasked with in the other realms and so a lot of the bird people a lot of the bird races are protecting people walking with us pr protecting us in the way that we think angels are mm -hmm. and so a lot of sasquatch would also have that avian, that bird DNA in them as well. And so that might make them a little bit more um, leaning towards that kind of role and acting like an angel. But they don't, well, I was going to say they don't necessarily save people, but they certainly can too. I, mm -hmm. I know I've heard of dozens, dozens of stories um, where people are, um, you know, actually saved by the Sasquatch, you know, they asked for help in a certain situation or they know, you know, they were about to get into a car crash and something miraculous happened, um, you know, that can't be explained, like their car was spun around or something or, oh, um, you know, or different incidences or even like I said, when I, I was healed of cervical cancer. So, you know, it's really, it's kind of a matter of perception. I mean, um, I, I think of that, yeah, as like an angel, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it just really depends on what your perception of an angel yeah. is. Or like so a, they a help, guardian for they sure, heal, right? Mm -hmm. Right. They help and they heal, but they're not your typical, what people would think of as, uh, of as an, an angel. They're more of a, they're more there for our guidance because they really want to help humanity and our consciousness. And so they're really helping to, to guide us more consciously, but 
but certainly if uh, we're connected with a Sasquatch and we're about to put ourselves in some kind of situation where we could be hurt and they're able to interfere, then, you know, oftentimes they will. But it, I don't know the rules behind that, what's karmic, what's not, what's free will, what's not. But um, certainly I've, I've thought of them as angels myself several times. Yeah. Well, we have a next question from David. David, you're busy tonight. I'm so glad you're here. <laughs> <laughs> and he asked, I was on expedition and there was an autistic young man with us who had this connection with the Sasquatch. Uh, does Kelly's son have a connection to them as well? He does. He does. Um, yeah, it's really, it's, it's really special. Um, there's been a couple times where he'll point out, you know, the, their presence uh, even when I wasn't feeling it or expecting it, um, mm -hmm. you know, he's actually right now he's he's tent camping and, and <laughs> since it's summertime, he's really enjoying that. He told me the other day that I heard some noises outside of my tent, <laughs> and 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 I asked him, I said, oh, do you think it was the deer? And he goes, no, I think it was the Sasquatch. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> and um, but it's funny, um, you know, being autistic he was nonverbal for a very long time um and he wasn't or he didn't speak very clearly or it was just like a couple words he couldn't speak a whole sentence and uh, around age five i think he was five when he spoke his first sentence and that first sentence um i i was giving him a bath and i walked out of the bathroom for a few minutes so he could play by himself and i i went back in there and he goes mommy Bigfoot just came in here and scared me. And I was just like, <sighs> I, I was just speechless. I was like, first of all, you just said a sentence. You know, I was just like, what in the world? You just said an entire big sentence. And second of all, the sentence that you said <laughs> is mind-blowing to me. And so when he said scared, he meant startled because he was right. smiling about it. You know, oh, he yeah, was acting yeah. afraid. Um, you know, so, but yeah, he, he does definitely have a connection with them as well. And uh, I, I think we'll probably see more of that coming out more, you know? Right, right, it's, for sure. There, there's something when they're real young and there's that innocence, you know, now he's 10, he's not so innocent anymore. Right. <laughs> but he's still, but he's still very connected. Right, he's strong he's, relationship with them. And, yes, and he predicts a lot of stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I, I, if I know if he says something that's just kind of off the wall or kind of like, why did you say that? Or where did that come from? I, I listen because yeah. he's pretty much always right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, my, yeah. my kids were raised, because I'm a psychic, they were raised psychically as well, that they could use that gift. And so um, I was like you. I would just, oh, my gosh, did you just say that? And it just came through, you know. It's like, wow, out of the mouth of babes, right? It's great wisdom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> great wisdom. <laughs> We have a, another question. David says, well, we were speaking of species. Um, what is the relationship of dogmen and Sasquatch? That's a great question. Yeah, um, the dogmen, I can't say for sure exactly the direct relation between them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people uh, assume the dogmen are the Sasquatch as well because they're hairy humanoids, and so, you know, they, they just kind of put them in that category with them as well, um, and, which isn't too far off, um, but they, they are made up of different DNA as well. Um, the Sasquatch were originally, when they were seeded in uh, Lemuria, there was a giant um, lemur species. There was a, a species of giant lemur living in Lemuria. And so when the star elders created the original Sasquatch race that was here on Earth, they used um, star DNA from other star systems. A lot of it was primarily Pleiadian, but also, you know, Syrian. There was different races that all kind of, by the time they got to the Pleiades, they, they were 
you know, a, a lot of hybrid races anyway. And, uh, but so they use that star DNA uh, with this giant lemur DNA to create the first mammal people, the first Sasquatch people here on, on Earth. And so lemurs uh, actually look quite a bit like dogs. They're kind of canine looking. Mm -hmm. And so um, some of the dog men have more DNA from that race. Um, you know, uh, there's also, they've, I don't want to say reinvented. There's also been other, um, races of dog men and that's not the term I've heard them called, uh, guardians mm. because a lot of these canine type beings, um, are, that would be their primary role. Like I said, how the, uh, the bird or the avian people kind of evolved into a role more of angels and, and being protectors. Um, the, the canine beings are primarily guardians mm. and not necessarily guardians of humans. They're guardians of different portals or different realms. They're the guardians of different realms from what I understand. And, um, and that means quite often death. Um, you know, because that's, uh, one of the biggest transitions, one of the biggest portals that we're going to go through in our experiences is, is the portal between life and death. And so, uh, they're the kind of the check-in point uh, of some of those portals, but that's really about the most that I know about them. I, I don't have a whole lot of knowledge about the dog people or the guardians. Um, I know there's some that uh, may have more knowledge, but from what I understand, they're not really a race that many communicate with very often. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know the reason for that, but they seem to be a little bit more mysterious than, than some of the others. Yeah, they're kind of coming behind. Uh, they're letting the Sasquatch go first, right? And they kind of come behind. Right. <laughs> So um, Vicki Christensen asked, many people think that they come from the Nephilim, not the dogmen, back to Sasquatch. Um, right. Would that be correct? Uh, or, no. Oh, okay. Yeah, as a matter of fact, they say we are not the Nephilim, we are not the Elohim. Okay. Um, you know, those are mainly sciences that are trying to make connections between the different races that are known. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so n no, the yeah. Sasquatch are, are not really whatsoever related to them. Wonderful. And any more than, than we're related to them because mm -hmm. we, we are, you know, mm -hmm. so the, we're all related, but there's, there's no direct connection between those races. Right. And that's one of their biggest, isn't that one of their biggest teachings is how we're connected all as one. Right. Yes, it certainly is. And, you know, so that's overall there, I mean, there's so many messages, but yeah, one of the bigger reminders is that we're all connected. We're all children of God, children of earth. And we all need to be, you know, working uh, together for mm -hmm. a better better way of life, better humanity, but, but realizing our interconnectedness and not with just the different beings walking the planet, not just the other humans and not just the animals or the plants, but everything, absolutely everything, every little aspect that, that we're connected to, um, you know, and so if we can remember that, that we're a part of everything and everything's a part of us, we would probably, you know, start to change our, our attitudes and our perceptions a lot more and drop a lot of the hatred and the anger and the greed and the, you know, all of the negative kind of energies that, that we're seeing so predominantly in the world right now. And if we realize that we're all the same, there wouldn't be so much of that. Yeah, yeah. So an inner, so we're... Um not only uh, interconnected, but where it's an interspecies connection, right? And we're going to expand that yeah. even more. Yeah, it's great. Kelly Duforce yeah. writes, my daughter Sarah is autistic. Oh, did I just, and she has, oh, I just lost that. And let's see where we find it. And she has a connection with them as well. And, you know, I want to say my grandson also has his, he's on that range and he has a strong connection with 
time. We always talk about Sasquatch and Bigfoot all the time. And so he just never questioned any of it. Oh yeah, it was like a matter of fact, now let's just take it from there. I love that. And then Vicki J. Christensen writes, have they ever yeah. been here ever since Lumeria or were they reseeded? No, they, from what I understand, they were seeded in, in Lemuria, the area known as Mu, uh, about 500 million years ago. I'm sorry, 200 million years ago. My apologies. 200 million, 200 million years ago. So um, that doesn't necessarily mean that there weren't um, hairy humanoid races before they were seeded in Lemuria on Earth, but that's the first time that they came to Earth. Mm -hmm. Most likely there was hairy beings, you know, on other planets and other star systems. But still the first ones that are the ones that we are most familiar with, the ones that we're, you know, really talking about and have the interest in here, um, the ones that we communicate with, um, yeah, they they would have come here just two hundred million years ago. Yeah, I'm. I'm you know, I say a, just. <laughs> a, a funny thing comes. A funny image comes to me when we're talking, and it's they're just showing me like the Sasquatch on Star Wars with um, um, Chewbacca. Uh, yes, Chewbacca. You know, it's like oh my gosh, <laughs> he's the, that's he's the star. You know, don't forget about him. That was funny. So they're laughing. I think that, that's funny. It's true. You know. George Lucas must be really connected because I mean, even though Star Wars is like a fantasy, you know, it's probably closer to reality than most of the movies that we watch. So, right. yeah. Right. <laughs> and speaking of future, then Kelly, what do you see for the future for for our Sasquatch communication? Have you uh, do you have anything that they've communicated to you just recently, or? Where do you want to go with this? I know it's a big, you're in a big crossroads, and, and I know that Sunbow and you are planning to work together more. Or What's what's happening in your, your future that you'd like to uh, communicate with our listeners here tonight? Well, you know what? A lot of things are just really uncertain right now, just like they are for everyone and for the whole world. We, This is actually what they've been communicating with me is that this is a time to create the world that we want yes, right now. Yes. This this little lull time that we're having where we're all like, what's going on and what's happening to the world and, you know, all of this. And uh, this is the time to create what we want to see. Um, no matter how much energy and effort you put into it, that that's one thing that the Sasquatch reminded me too, is you don't have to do, 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 do so much, you know, um, mm -hmm. just putting your intentions and your energy towards that and doing one little small step, one little thing at a time, you know, helping one person at a time or, or doing this kind of thing. And, and that's how we move forward and that's how we you know go about this change and this co-creation but right now with you know the world out of balance so to speak mm -hmm. um it's a real opportunity for us to come together to really start implementing these changes all of these things that used to be things that we couldn't do suddenly we're finding that we can we can do them and actually nothing ever stopped us from doing them except for our minds and our beliefs that we were told that we couldn't do them, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of it is kind of just getting out of our minds and our belief systems. Uh, you know, we're, they're always reminding us that we are sovereign beings and, um, that can't be taken away from us, no matter how many rules that they write and no matter how many, you know, restrictions they try to put, put on us or and di different things that they want to implement into this world to, you know, quote unquote, make it better, you know, but we all know that it, it's just to control us, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, but the thing is, is that we don't, it, it's just a matter of belief. 
and that's what they really want us to realize and so if we can if we realize that we're not subjected to that we don't have to to buy into that we can create what we really do want and so this is you know what we're doing this is what we're moving forward um a lot of people feel inspired to do different things to start teaching uh, about the knowledge that they know uh or people you know feel inspired to do different things some some people are um, you know, I, I don't even want to say doomsday or so to speak, but they feel um, the guidance to start gathering and collecting different things, mm -hmm. um, you know, to start doing things that are, is going to help humanity in the long run. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're all doing our little part, even without even fully understanding the guidance that we're getting on different things. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people are like, I have no idea why I just went out bought 50 pounds of rice or something like that but you know what you're you're gonna use that one day and you know what whatever it might be um my my partner and i we've been gifted with a wonderful beautiful library of these amazing esoteric books and all of these different subjects and you know so we made this decision we're we're gonna uphold this we're going to create a library for for people oh, that has that. the most um you know the best knowledge that you can get that's really hidden mm -hmm. i'm sure a lot of people are aware that our our history is being rewritten and hidden and burned and completely changed and things like that so you know we're collecting all of these wonderful texts on not just esoteric things but um, lost in ancient history, but also more recent history, how to do things that are things that, you know, have been lost to us basically since we're not using, you know, different things anymore. We're so dependable on um, technology and, and the internet and things like that, um, you know, that we, we take a lot of that for granted. And uh, books have some of the most wonderful information um, you know, so that's just one of the many things that, you know, one of our projects that, hey, we need to really preserve this history without even knowing exactly well, why. Why is that such a, a strong intuition of a, a thing to do? And it's like, well, I just trust it. I know there's a reason for it. And all of these books keep coming to us. The universe is showing us that, yes. I want you to do this here. Here's 50 more books to add to the collection, you know? I love it. I love um, it. Yeah. And so it's, it's amazing. And so uh, that's how we're all going to get through this and come together by all doing our individual things, what, what we're able to do to be creative or um, however we're able to, to share ourselves in the highest and best ways to help everybody else. Sounds great. Uh, it's it's so true though. Where we go, we go together, right? It's it's there. It's just a beautiful uh, First Nation quote that I just love. It seems to be the same with uh, with the, our our luck to have Sasquatch, who's so patient to to help uh, give their wisdom to you and to Sunbow and to us through experiences or um, and meditation through meditation or or through a, a walk or a dream. Kelly Dufour says she's been having dreams that people are learning how to fly or realizing they always could. And Tambi Lindsay writes, I always have dreams that I can fly, even last night. And we have a hello, a greetings from Singapore from Peter Leong Chase. So we have quite a quite of a, a active group on here tonight. I love it. I love it. And that's Excellent. connecting, right? Hi guys. <laughs> yeah. What's that? It's about connecting, right? That's like the the major thing. And we're exactly. you know, COVID's not gonna keep us apart. We're it's if we can't be together physically, we can we can connect energetically, we can connect heart to heart, and that knows no time and space, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. I know you walk that talk, girl. <laughs> well, <laughs> I do my best. I'm still human. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, the, the Sasquatch, um, George, back in 2013, 
when I was off going through another, you know, anyway, it was a point in my life where I didn't hardly have really anybody. And I was, um, a, a big life transition and change. And anyway, the, George called me the goddess of alliance. Ooh. And I was just like, oh, that's kind of, you know, I just kind of laughed about it. And I was like, okay, that's kind of a little inflated title. And, you know, I was like, <laughs> whatever, because, <laughs> you know. Oh, I um, say that again. What like, did, say it again. He called, me, he called me the goddess of alliance. Ooh. And yeah, and I was just like, that's it. you know, whatever. I just kind of blew it off because also at that time, you know, George is, he's silly and fun. <laughs> so I can like joke around with him like that too, you know? Uh -huh. um, but, but anyway, it just didn't make any sense because at that time in my life, everything was coming apart and I was like disconnecting from everybody and I was moving and, and like just the people in my life did not care for me too much at that time <laughs> and all kinds of things. So I was like, goddess of alliance. That yeah. doesn't, you know, whatever. It that doesn't make courage. any sense. You have courage. You have great but, courage and right. strength. Right. But then fast forward about four years later when I was uh, at the first Sasquatch conference that we, we had. And there was at least, I don't know, 50 to 70 people in front of me. And I was on the stage talking to them. And uh, I took a picture of everybody. And then right then behind me, like really hard, I could feel this big push. And I was like, what is that? You know, not, it didn't hurt, but it was like a really obvious, somebody pushed me. Oh. And, uh, and it was George. And he goes, see, I told you, you were the goddess of alliance. <laughs> and I was like, Oh my gosh, I never, I forgot all about this because that was years before and I, I never thought of it, but then I'm, I'm sitting here looking at all these faces that are coming from all over the world, right? you know, and I'm, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I totally see what you mean now. So, okay. I, I guess I'm it. a little more accepting of that title. Thank yeah, you. of course. Of but. course. <laughs> well, Kelly Dufour says that fits you perfectly, Kelly. So Thank there you, you go. And Kelly knows, she knows. And then uh, <laughs> Tammy said she, a uh, flying Sasquatch. That must have been funny because someone said they had a dream of a flying Sasquatch. Have you heard of that? Ooh, that, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had a dream of a flying Sasquatch, but I, I did have a dream. I've had dreams where I'm flying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've seen the, the, the Sasquatch in a ship, but never a flying one. But mm -hmm. I, I intend to have that experience now. Yeah, now that I never thought about that, <laughs> that opens that door, right? Ooh, that door is open. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Well, I, it's just been a delight having you on the show tonight, Kelly. It's just time went by really fast. It did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I just, um, I wish you the best in your work and your, do you have a new book coming out anytime soon or? What's on the future for you in, in your work? Yes, I don't really have a date. I'm, you know, I'm jotting down little things here and there, and it's not really coming together quite as a book yet, but I have uh, ideas. And so, you know, eventually I will be publishing. Um, I was also writing some heart songs is what oh. I call them. They're, oh. they're poems, um, you know, that have been channeled or, or inspired by you know, my higher self. And so um, I was going to put together a book like that, but more really kind of what the focus is, even the publishing that that will come. But um, there's a couple other people, two or three other people um, that have some wonderful material that they'd like me to help them publish. And oh, so nice. I'm really excited to help other people get their material out there. Love um, that. Uh, as well as we want to move towards um, some virtual gatherings and things, especially now since, so. you know, we're not able to meet physically right now. Right. Um, my goal is, is to have a virtual gathering in January or maybe early February. Excellent. Um, you know, so basically, yeah, continuation of, of the Psychic Sasquatch Retreat, but a, uh, a virtual version. 
and then um, and then we could do more regular um, you know classes mm -hmm. and and things like that or Q and A's because I there are so many questions all the time there's wonderful questions and it's hard to you know it's it's a lot easier when somebody asks a direct question and you can answer direct you know rather than try to read through a book to find your answer so um you know that's that's something that i i'm finding um that would be a good idea it's been suggested so have um you know more online meetings uh mm -hmm. as well as as soon as we can start gathering physically um uh i'd like to have more of those too. There's talk about having one in New York and mm. talk about maybe something in North Carolina. And once the borders open, I'd love to go back to uh, Canada. We always do one in Canada every year. Right. Right. Um, so this year there is nothing planned right, right now right. and right. we're not going to try to plan it for the fall because, you right. know, borders still not even open, but right. um, so more, more travel, more publishing, more meetings, more unity and uh, more more building and co-creating with with other lovely humans oh. and other races. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. Well, we look forward to see what you're creating and being a part of it. So, thank thank you again for being on the show and for all of our listeners. Thank you for coming in today to the Cosmic Oracle Show. Next week, I have a great guest. I I can't even believe I got this guest on myself. It's uh, Grant Cameron will be here, and uh, we will be having an amazing talk with him. And I'll be coming to you live, too, from Mount Shasta. I'll be actually in Mount Shasta next week. And so we will be having the show live uh, from Mount Shasta, California, with uh, all things Venusians, right? So I have a whole big, huge Venus connection that I'm uh, working on with with that. I wonder if the Sasquatch have a Venus connection, Kelly. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yes. I, I don't know about the direct Venus connection, but I know I have a direct Venus yeah. connection. Yeah, me and, too. Uh, and the Sasquatch are very loving beings. So yes, yeah. why, why not? Why We're all not? Connected. We're all connected, right? Right. Right. All right, everyone, go out and have a great week. Uh, enjoy uh, your your life with your family and your friends and just um, connect with all the love with everyone and um, and we'll visualize and redream a new future here. Don't buy the fear, you know, go, let's go up above that. Like when you fire walk, you, how you walk a fire is you put your energy higher to or greater than that of the fire. So, all right, love to everybody. See you next week. Thank you.